Hi there, Bob Wormsley here from Insidium, Top Tip Tuesday time again. And on today's video, we're going to be using Nexus Exposure FX. This is the new feature, which is part of the current beta. And we're going to be making this detailed fire simulation. Remember, the Black Friday sale is still on. Your last chance now to get 50% off everything on the Insidium website. So let's get started. In our scene here, we've got our rotating Nexus logo, Geo, and we've got a Nexus Exposure Effects object here. Now, this is in the defaults, apart from we've resized it slightly to these dimensions. And we've put our voxel size down to 2.5, which is going to be kind of our draft working uh, resolution for this scene. So what we need to do is go to our Sources tab and drag in our Nexus logo. And now if we hit Play, we're going to get an emission, and then we can see some fire and smoke. All right, let's refine this. What we want to do is emit from the surface of our object, that's fine, but actually I want to increase that surface width a bit so we get a bit more fuel. And we are emitting temperature and fuel. These are the default amounts. Now, I don't want to emit any temperature from the object itself. I'm going to put that on zero. But now I've done that, if we hit play, we're not going to get any fire. And that's because the fuel that's being emitted hasn't ignited. And the reason it hasn't ignited, if we go to our simulation settings, go to the burning options, these burning options are only when you're emitting fuel. And look, we have an ignition temperature default of 600. So any fuel will only ignite when it is hotter than 600. And there's no heat in this scene, so they're not igniting. So let's put that onto zero. Now when we hit play, we're going to get that immediate combustion of that fuel. All right, let's leave this as default for now, and we'll come back to our simulation settings in a minute. So we'll go to our sources, and what we're going to do is reduce the pressure. Um, let's put this down to one. We don't want a lot of pressure from our source in this scene, and that's going to kind of calm this down a little bit. And we also want our um, smoke and fire to interact with our object. So we need to go to our colliders tab and drag in the same object into there. Now we'll go back to sources. All right, so now we have got our emission of fuel. It's igniting and it's colliding with our geometry. And we've got something that's looking like this. So what we need to do now is we want to um, make this emission less uniform. At the moment, there's fuel just being emitted all over the surface. So to do that, we're going to open up this twirl down. And we are going to weight this fuel emission at fault. It's uniform across the surface. We're going to use a noise. And this is where the noise is white. It'll have full fuel. Where it's black, it'll have none. And um, it'll animate, obviously, because we've got frequency value here. Let's put this on maybe, I don't know, 67%. The length scale of the noise, let's reduce it down to 30. You can put whatever um, values you want on there. Let's hit play. So now we have got kind of animated fuel, uh, weighted fuel emission on the surface of our objects. That's bringing us a little bit more detail as well. Okay, so now we've got that, we can actually leave those um, settings. Actually, I think we've got a little bit too much fuel going on here. Let's reduce this fuel value down to maybe 0 0.06, so it's not quite as much of a huge blaze. Yeah, so that's looking a little bit better, isn't it? Okay, so now we're going to go to our simulation settings and make some adjustments. Uh, the burn rate is the rate at which the fuel is burnt, any available fuel is burnt. Um, so let's just increase this up to, say, 10, and that'll just make sure that any fuel that is emitted is pretty much burning through um, as uh, there's no, no kind of residual fuel left over. And we can increase the temperature. Look, if we put this way up, we're going to get more temperature on combustion, so we get bigger and taller flames. Let's put that down to maybe 6,000. Uh, we can maybe reduce the smoke production a little bit. And the gas expansion, look, if we put this expansion way up, the gas expands on ignition and we get this really big forceful blast, which is good for kind of explosions and stuff, but not so much for this. Let's put that down to maybe 10. That's looking good. All right, and then we can go down to our dissipation settings. And what we could do, look, if we put our temperature dissipation really high, we get loads of temperature on ignition, but then it cools quickly, so we get much lower flames. Uh, if we want higher flames, we can have that temperature dissipate more slowly. And maybe put this down to something like, I don't know, 0.63, so we get them licking up to the top of our domain. 
And we could maybe increase that smoke dissipation so the smoke dissipates a little bit more quickly. Something like that's looking good. And then just finally in the simulation settings, I'm going to go to my buoyancies. These are the um, default buoyancies for these channels. What I'm going to do is leave everything as is apart from, let's give the smoke a slightly negative buoyancy value so it doesn't rise quite as quickly and that's looking good okay now we're going to have a look at um, creating some kind of almost kind of noisy windy blowiness in our smoke and fire and we're going to do that with our dynamics options by default there is a default turbulence and vorticity in here I'm just going to switch off that vorticity for now and in the turbulence we are going to increase the strength of this a lot because we want some big swirls in this so we'll put that strength up to 30 just with a simplex noise and we're starting to get look you can see this swirliness um, as if it's in a really gusty environment uh, I'm going to put my octaves down to zero octaves will bring you fine detail and actually we're just using this turbulence for these big swirls and we're going to use the vorticity for the finer detail so that's looking good we could maybe reduce the frequency of that so it's not quite blowing and animating through quite as quickly but yeah that's giving us this really nice look isn't it and then finally we're going to add some vorticity and the vorticity, the turbulence injects velocities into the grid. The vortic uh, vorticity just enhances and exaggerates existing detail. And if we put this way up, you'll start seeing that we start getting this kind of fuzzy detail in the smoke and in the fire as well. And that's looking good. But one thing to note is that this may look good at this voxel resolution. But when we go to much finer voxel resolutions, you need far less vorticity. This will be too fuzzy. So what I'm going to do is put this down to the default 2. And I'm going to do a bit of really simple mapping here, actually. At the moment, we just have um, the same strength vorticity throughout this grid. But I'm going to map this to the Y position. And what I want is strong vorticity at the bottom of the grid, but not quite as strong at the top, because I don't want the smoke to get too fuzzy. So what this Y um, is saying is, the strength of the vorticity is on this Y axis, and the position within the Y is on this axis. So this is the bottom of the grid, and this is moving to the top of the grid. Now we want this the other way around. We want at the bottom of the grid full vorticity and as the fluid moves upwards we want the vorticity to reduce. So we'll bring that down. So something like that. So now we have say, uh, got full vorticity at the bottom and that vorticity tails off towards the top. So this is looking good now. I think we're ready to go to our uh, much uh, higher voxel count by reducing this voxel size. What you'll see is, I'm going to put this down to say 1. Obviously we're going to get um, far um, slower calculations because we've massively increased the voxel count. Look, we've gone to over 300 million voxels now, so obviously this is going to take longer to simulate, but look at this fantastic detail that we're getting in our sim. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start caching this, and we'll just cache 150 frames or so. So as soon as that's finished, I'll come back to you, and we'll do a couple of test render frames just to see how it's looking. Okay, so we've cached 167 frames. It took just under a couple of minutes and we've got some really nice detail here now, haven't we? So um, we're not going to go through rendering in this top tip, obviously. We'll do those in later videos, but I will include two uh, materials for you uh, in the scene file. And let's just have a quick look at those now. If we go to render, uh, let's go to, sorry, redshift render view, bring this up and we'll just start rendering this frame. So what we have got here is our very basic, almost default material, we called it Fire Basic, which gives us a really nice look because it's a good detail in the sim, but you can kind of get a stylized flame look, which is quite popular if you go uh, into a slightly more complex setup. So I've got this Fire Detail material here, and this uses a few kind of rendering tricks to kind of hollow out the, fly, uh, the fire and give this nice kind of glowy outline effect. So I'll include both of those in the scene file so you can have a dig around on how we can render this nice detailed fire sim.